calling to order the City of Las Vegas Historic Preservation Commission for May the 26th, 2021. Uh, before we actually call the roll, I would like to, uh, to welcome our newest member, Hollis J. Gillespie. Uh, Hollis fills the Preservation Commission's Category 9 opening as the Director of the Nevada State Museum in Las Vegas, a position she started a long time ago, six weeks ago actually, uh, on April the 5th. However, uh, Ms. Gillespie, who has a very impressive background in museum work, uh, uh, lives here in, in Clark County in Southern Nevada. Uh, before that, she was Executive Director of the State of New Mexico Museum, President uh, of Operations at the Turtle Bay Exploration Park in Redding, California, and Director of Education at SeaWorld in Florida. As I mentioned, uh, Hollis lives in Southern Nevada where she's been in private practice consulting the last few years with museums and other cultural organizations on strategic planning and business planning. Welcome. Uh, you now have to sing the uh, state song or we'll hold off on that. Uh. <laughs> Okay. The other trick is pressing the uh, the red button, and that allows you to be heard by all of us. Uh, uh, a little bit like Zoom, we turn it on and off sometimes. But that's uh, life as we go along. So let's please call the roll. Chair Stodal. Present. Vice Chair Laramie. Here. Commissioner Levine. Here. Commissioner Beck. Here. Commissioner Hodgkiss. Here on the phone. Commissioner Serfus. Here. Commissioner Cosgrove. Here. Commissioner Palancar. Here. Commissioner Palacios. Here. Commissioner Long. Here. Commissioner Moody. Here. Commissioner Gillespie. Commissioner Seabrand. Here. Thank you. We do have a quorum. Great. Thank you. Item number three, uh, or actually number two, are we in compliance with the open meeting law? Yes, we are. Great. Thank you. Item number three is public comment. Comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard, come forward and give your name for the record, the amount of discussion, as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed may be limited. Uh, is there anybody in the uh, public that would like to speak on an action item? Please identify yourself. Good afternoon, my name is Jeff Alpert, a resident of North Las Vegas, for the record, 3828 Fusilier Drive. And if I'm allowed to, I'd like to speak about the award recipients, item five. Please. Okay, <clears throat> about five, six years ago, I started doing research on local history, and I just wanted to acknowledge the three reward recipients today. I know Dennis McBride has been a great supporter of the Friends of the Museum that I'm very active with, and he's been an excellent director up until his retirement at the museum, and I appreciate that we now have Hollis Gillespie on board, and I'm looking forward to working with her as well. And I know Dennis has done a lot of research on local history, and I appreciate what he has done. Also, I appreciate what Clay T. White has done, to um, spread the knowledge of local history and what she's done for oral history at UNLV. And I especially want to remember Liz Warren. Liz was very kind to me about five, six years ago when I started doing research on Kyle Ranch. She mentored me, shared with me her photos, and gave me suggestions on how to proceed. And she was even nice enough to give me a tour of Good Springs which was wonderful, and I learned later we actually were doing it on her 82nd birthday, which was a surprise. But um, recently, the uh, University Research Library has, um, has access now to her files, and everything's there, and it's quite extensive, and I did spend some time looking through the, uh, some of the boxes, and not only was she involved with the you know, Spanish Trail Association and the history of water, but she was also very actively involved with multiple organizations, ones that dealt with local history to s preserve the old Mormon fort, et cetera, et cetera. So looking through some of her files, I appreciated how much she has done because she didn't throw anything away. Okay. So she will be missed, and I just wanted to be here to speak a few words about her. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any further public comment? Hearing none, uh, we'll move on to item number four, possible action to approve the final minutes by a reference of the regular meeting of April the 28th, 2021. Uh, look for a motion. I move to approve the minutes from April. Do we have a second? Second, Commissioner Cosgrove. Further comments? General public? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Yes, by phone. Was that an aye on the telephone? Yes, sir. Thank you. Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously with those uh, present and the chair voting in favor. Thank you. Let's move on to item number five, which is 21-0268-HPC1, report by the Department of Planning regarding the presentation of the 2021 Historic Preservation Awards. Diane. Uh, thank you, so Seabrent for the record. Uh, so thank you everybody for coming. This is going to be our presentation of the Historic Preservation Awards and I just wanna lay out what um, the uh, outline is for this. So we are going to be presenting the awards in the way they are nominated on our forms and that would be starting with the bricks and mortar category. Second would be the preservation education category. Third is the advocacy category and the last is the career achievement category. What will happen is the individual who nominated you will read your award. Um, still with some COVID uh, precautions in place, whatever anybody is comfortable with, um, I can place the award on the table if you don't want to um, get close or I can hand you the award if the uh, chair and vice chair would like to come down and also um, be part of the awards again, whatever anybody is comfortable with. We will ask everybody to stay for a picture when you're getting your individual award then take a seat and the next award will be read and presented. And we ask that everybody still stay. At the end, we will then do a group photo. And at that time, you are free to leave. You may stay and for the rest of the meeting if you so desire, but you are free to go. So thank you. So I think the, uh, to, uh, to keep us um, uh, moving forward uh, as far as a process, I think it would be uh, uh, best if you were able to uh, 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 give give the award, and then we'll move on to to, to the next to the next person, and then have a group photo at the very end. Great. Well, this is uh, uh, the 48th anniversary of uh, the U.S. Congress creating Historic Preservation Week, and then expanding to Historic Preservation Month. And in Las Vegas, in May, in many forms. Uh, in different ways, we have been celebrating the founding of the community of Las Vegas since 1905. Uh, through the mayor and city council of Las Vegas, the city has been in the forefront of historic preservation, in part through the creation of the Historic Preservation Commission and the Centennial Commission. That was in 2005, when a year-long celebration of the 100th birthday of the community took place providing a new foundation to preserve the diverse and unique heritage of our city. This year's celebration by the City of Las Vegas includes the Las Vegas Day Parade and the release of the third documentary in a series of documentaries focusing on each decade since the founding of the community of Las Vegas in 1905. The first documentary covered the period 19, up to 1920. The second one covered uh, 1920s and this month, uh, on May the 15th, we uh, uh, premiered the documentary of the 1930s. Uh, also earlier this week, the city uh, gave the initial approval through the Centennial Commission to produce two additional documentaries, the 1940s and the 1950s. And just a point of reference, the first documentary that covered 1905 to 1920 has more than three million views on Facebook alone, or excuse me, on, on uh, YouTube alone. Uh, so it's a very successful uh, 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 documentary. Another way the city celebrates the National Preservation Month is through our excellent and historic preservation award program. This week we are celebrating the 18th year that the city's Historic Preservation Commission honors individuals and organizations who have contributed to preserving 
the historic architectural and cultural resources of Las Vegas, as well as those whose efforts to promote historic preservation awareness and educational initiatives deserve recognition. Through a nomination process this year, we have nine very deserving recipients, and we as a commission congratulate uh, uh, all of them. At this point, uh, I would like to turn the, uh, the meeting over to Vice Chair Laramie for the first award reading. Great, thank you. Um, so the first award is for the bricks and mortar category. And this is awarded to Cameron Foulad. Um, apologies for the abbreviation of your name. I was told I could cheat on that. Um, the award is in recognition of your renovation for the former auto garage located at 1327 South Main Street, which has been converted into Nevada Brew Works, Huddle Brewing Company, and most recently, um, Soul Belly in the Las Vegas Downtown Arts District. Your innovative adaptive reuse of the 1966 building embodies the spirit of preservation and urban regeneration. Thank you. Congratulations and thank you. One of the challenges that, uh, that we faced in, in making these uh, nominations or making the selections uh, was the narrowing down to two sentences of, uh, in many cases, uh, book long resumes and, and uh, uh, work that uh, the, the recipients have done to uh, to deserve this award. So if it's only two sentences long, trust me, uh, th there's uh, uh, several pages behind this. Preservation Education category awarded to Dr. David Schwartz and his role uh, as a key figure in educating students at UNLV as well as the general public about the history of gaming in Las Vegas and Southern Nevada. Through not only your work as an author, editor, lecturer, media commentator, but advisor to, to many committees and, and boards. And as a personal note, uh, when you read uh, one of his books, you can really trust it. Uh, it has been researched, it has been footnoted, and corrects many of the myths of, of gaming in, in Las Vegas. So all of his work uh, uh, deserves a salute. So David, please. Work. We look forward. We look forward to your next book, Michelle. Also in the preservation education category, um, we have an award for Tina Belint in recognition for your role as a Nevada Preservation Foundation volunteer um, in supporting and promoting educational programs and projects that focus on preserving the history of the city of Las Vegas. Um, your skills as a researcher of historic areas in, uh, for many tours, only, only a few examples such as the McWilliams and Clark's town site um, and the Seeing Stars tour in the downtown area, as well as your talents as a tour guide are invaluable contributions to preservation education efforts throughout the city. Um, I'd also like to add, I know Tina was a early volunteer with the Neon Museum as well um, and brought many of those skills to Nevada Preservation Foundation. Thank you.
Again, in preservation education, um, we are awarding Mitch Cohen. Similarly, for your uh, recognition of your role as a Nevada Preservation Foundation volunteer, um, supporting and promoting educational programs and efforts. Um, some of your efforts have included research also on the McWilliams and Clark's town site, as well as the Woodlawn Cemetery tour. Um, you also bring many talents as a tour guide and are an invaluable contribution to preservation education efforts throughout our city. Again, Mitch is also an early volunteer and an, and an ongoing member of the Neon Museum as well. And last but certainly not least in our preservation education category, um, this award goes to Amy Raymer in recognition of your role as a Nevada Preservation Foundation volunteer as well um, in supporting and promoting educational programs and projects that focus on preserving the history of our city of Las Vegas. Amy's skills as a historic researcher um, have been used on tours such as Midmod Mixup, John S. Park, um, and most recently, a new tour in the McNeil neighborhood. Um, her talents as a tour guide are invaluable, and again, Amy is also an early volunteer with the Neon Museum. Next up, I'd like to turn it over to Colleen Beck. In the advocacy category, uh, the award is to Dr. Elizabeth Von Till Warren in recognition of more than three decades worth of your tireless efforts to advocate for the preservation of historic places in Las Vegas, including the old Las Vegas Mormon Fort, the Las Vegas Springs Archaeological Site, the historic Fifth Street School, the Las Vegas High School, and the Huntridge Theater. Your dedication to championing the preservation and conservation of the city is highly commended. This is being awarded posthumously to her family. Her children, Jonathan Warren and Louis Warren, will collect on her behalf. The next advocacy award is awarded to Dr. Claude Nelson Warren in recognition of more than three decades of your archaeological research efforts documenting and preserving historic places in Las Vegas, including the Old Mormon Fort, the Helen Stewart Cemetery, and the Las Vegas Springs. Your unwavering advocacy defending these sites saved them from urban encroachment and is highly commended. Dr. Warren is not able to attend, so his children, Jonathan Warren and Louis Warren, will collect this one as well. And I would like to add to these two nominations the comment that many people don't realize that back in the 70s, the Warrens started trying to preserve important archaeological sites and 
other structures in Las Vegas. This is fi fi almost 50 years ago, it's probably 49, when it first started, and they developed the early preservation groups um, that have evolved and exist in other forms today. And we really owe these people a great debt for their foresight and they were up against a lot of odds in politics to get these things done, but they even got the US 95 move to go around the Big Springs site, and they were going to build a casino where the Mormon fort is. So these people are very tenacious and throughout their years since then have, have really contributed at a level most people don't realize. Next up is the Career Achievement category, and this is awarded to Clay T. White in recognition of your dedicated uh, work over decades to preserve the history of Las Vegas by collecting, documenting, and preserving oral history from the diverse communities who call Las Vegas home. Your role as an advocate and advisor on numerous committees and boards and your 13 years of serving on this commission, the Historic Preservation Commission, all dedicate your commitment to protecting Las Vegas' past. Thank you so much. Last award on the list uh, is the Career Achievement category as well. Uh, this is awarded to Dennis McBride in recognition of your decades of dedicated work to preserve the historic resources of Las Vegas and Southern Nevada, including Boulder City, including in your uh, curation the J. Florian Mitchell Photographic Collection, as well as your nine years as director of the Nevada State Museum in Las Vegas and your many, many publications. Uh, from building Hoover Dam to out of the neon closet, the queer community in the Silver State. Dennis, thank you for all your work and look forward to additional work. down for a, uh, a group photo, a uh, big group. Yeah, uh, yeah. can, uh, the commissioners can stand behind, I think, and the... Uh, if, if, you're, if you wanted it that way, it probably makes the most sense. So if we can get all of the award recipients to just stand along here. I think the best place to grab a photo from, it's kind of an awkward space <laughs> up there. So all the award recipients here, and then all of the commissioners, please come in as well. You want to be in the center? You know, I got it. Yes, come out too. How are you, Jack? Good to see you. Yes, yes. Hey, how are you? And, uh, it was 39 years ago. I counted 39 years ago. She introduced me to your mom. <laughs> Isn't that great. Yeah, I'm going to get right in here if I could squeeze in with play two. Yeah, you'll have to come around this part, like where everybody else is. Right over here. Yep, gather right there on the end. Everybody else in the back, you can't see, so you guys will all have to come up here. So. <laughs> 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 <la
count of three. One, two, three. Four. One more, one, two, three. And before everybody leaves, I will email everybody their individual photo as well as the group photo. Well, what about the rest of it? Well, there was no history before. Night. <laughs> we had a nice conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. She, she, thank you so much. And thank you for your kind words. Oh, you're welcome. I, I'm delighted that I got to meet them. I really spent more time with them in the 90s, but they would tell me the stories. Yes. And so they stood in my mind, and I thought, oh, wow. Well, they were all, all the things that you said. I mean, I knew I just remember all those things that you said. I want you to know. We haven't even talked about the valley. Before she, before she passed, it was her birthday party. And uh, she was still lucid. My mom had Alzheimer's, but she never lost a total. She was still lucid. And she actually got heartbreak. So when, when uh, we had the birthday party, I knew this was coming up and she was probably going to So I said, Mom, I think the city's going to give you some uh, recognition. And she said, for what? And I said, oh, all your work is for preservation. And, uh, and she said, it's the preservation commission. She just looked at the blank and I said, it's a bunch of old friends. Bob Stoldahl's on there, Jack Levine. And she was delighted. Oh. <laughs> she, oh, you know, she, when it was peers, it's a whole different thing. She never did it for public recognition, but peer recognition is a whole different thing. She was so delighted. We wouldn't want it, because we lost enough of it. She basically said, the two of them said no. And there was that one with Rob Lewis. That was so much fun. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. He was credit. He turns around and goes, that's it. Okay. Yeah. We've got to go back. We've got to go back. Very nice to talk to you. And again, all your help. Thank you all. We'll resume, resume the meeting. I think next time we do this, we're going to put the awards at the very end of the meeting so we can adjourn the meeting and go have a, a nice cocktail or something and, and have a... Can't do that? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. All right, we will resume the, the meeting of the City of Las Vegas Historic Preservation Commission for May the 26th. Uh, we are now at item number 6, 21-0312-HPC1, discussion for possible action regarding the approval of an application to designate the Hunter's Theater located at 1208 East Charleston Boulevard. And the, uh, the nomination is to put the, uh, uh, on the city's uh, historic property register. And Super, for the record, and this was on our last agenda, and that was to give all the commissioners the opportunity to read over the application packet. I, everybody is given 30 days. Um, Mr. Cran is here to answer any questions, if commissioners have any questions about that application. 
and and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the the focus right now is just exactly like the review of the application. We've all had a chance. Uh, speaking as the chair, I read it was a detailed uh, application, uh, and it was factual in nature. <laughs> uh, any any further comments from the commissioners? Uh, Jack Levine, for the record. Uh, I wanted to thank you for the tour that we were able to go on. Um, uh, it was fascinating, even as a member of the Save the Hunt Ridge group from 10 years ago, uh, I'd never been inside the building, and, and so I really appreciate the opportunity for you to do that. And I, you know, I've been long dedicated to trying to get something done there, and I am so thankful it is now in the hands of people who actually care and will actually get the job done. And I'll be in full support of this. Okay. Further comments from uh, any commissioners? Yeah, Commissioner Surface, uh, uh, kind of echoing uh, my colleagues' same comments. And it, it's great to see adaptive reuse being done and uh, reinvigorating uh, this great site, John. Colleen? Oh. I'm fine. Uh, comments? Please. Commissioner Palancar, again, I just want to ask, I, I didn't read what you did, I'm sorry, but um, when do you have a proposed time when you're going to actually start the construction and redevelopment there? Sure, for the record, John Curran, 985 White Drive. Uh, you know, like I shared last month, I know ever, there's an eagerness to start seeing construction there, and trust me when I say no one's more eager than we are. Uh, to begin that process, but unfortunately with this project, it's going to take some time. Uh, we are in uh, advanced conversations with a number of operators, uh, and they're going to ultimately drive the design. We're not just going to build a theater or store it and cross our fingers somebody uh, thinks we built the perfect theater. We're going to design it and build a, a theater that's specific to the needs of the end user. So uh, I can't put an exact timeline on those conversations. They are advanced and ongoing. We've got a number of operators we're, we're discussing with. And, uh, and then you know, we're going to have to, we're, we're likely going to pursue a historic tax credit, which is a lengthy process, uh, entitlements. And you know, it's, it's just, it just takes time, uh, is all I can say. But realistically, just to manage expectations, I'm not sure I envision real active construction on the site for maybe two years. Woo. Uh, but again, we've uh, you know we spent yeah. four million bucks. We're spending a lot more money, uh, you know, getting through all of our soft costs, and uh, you know we want to make sure we get it right, and uh, we we can't really rush it, given all the uh, complexity. True, I understand that. However, what are we going to do with the outside till then? I know you have security, supposedly across the street. I didn't see them, but. Um, what are we going to do about the outside building that is really, I mean, it does not look good in the parking lots and the people that are hanging out there. We really, for two more years of that, I don't think that's really a way to go. Yeah, so like I said, we've got seven days a week security. Uh, they patrol. They actually are hitting the property uh, something like 10 times a day, and they're stationed right across the street, so they see anything that's going on there. Uh, we have run into some issues, unfortunately, people selling stuff in the, uh, in the parking lot and they said, oh no, I paid the owner to be here. Uh, unfortunately, I think they got hustled because no certainly no one paid us for them to be there. And, uh, so we're, we're just working through all of that. You know, graffiti comes on and we, we try to attack it right away. Um, we thought about fencing it, but we thought that would be a little bit unsightly and it's pretty well fortified already. Um, so, you know, we're, we're cleaning it up, but uh, I don't think we're going to do anything on the exterior. We, we did kind of fix and clean the marquee a little bit. It was had some metal dangling. It looked a, bit, a little bit hazardous. We cleaned that up, and we did put some temporary uh, messaging on the marquee. It just says, follow the restoration at thehuntridge.com. Uh, but you know, other than that, we're just going to be working on keeping it clean and safe and uh, you know, working through our uh, ongoing lease negotiations and uh, design, design process. Yes, please, go ahead. Uh, I just have to tell you a personal story regarding this, which is I woke up this morning and thought, is it really true that we're actually going to be able to get the Huntridge Theater on the uh, Las Vegas Historic Property Register? We have tried for so long, and it's been a dream of ours to get this location on the register. 
and there's been a lot of work put in over the past almost 20 years. And so uh, really appreciate um, the support of the owners in getting this done. Well, uh, we couldn't do it without the help of the city and, uh, you know, who facilitated the transaction and we are uh, grateful for that and happy to uh, support the historic preservation efforts there. And I have to say, I'm glad some of you were able to join on the tours. We did give six tours uh, over the past uh, few weeks. I will say the best tour was, uh, I was just sort of along for the ride. Senator Richard Bryan attended. He grew up two doors down. He was at the first matinee in 1944, and he had unbelievable stories and, uh, and, and little anecdotes he was able to share. It was really pretty special to, uh, to hear that. So it was fun, and fun to get him on there. Great. Thank you. And, and, and also, as part of the, uh, the agreement with the, with the state of Nevada, the, uh, uh, the, the move to get on the national or the city register was, was part of that agreement as our quarterly reports. And we understand that there may, may not be any hardcore construction, I think you said, with, within two years. But we still look forward to the quarterly reports updating us on, on, on what, is, what is taking place. And do you, you anticipate any demolition before then? Uh, you know, I'm very reluctant to use that word. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, well, I mean, uh, you know, any the transformation we're, we're, of the west side? Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, we're sort of, I'd call it cleanup is probably a better word. Okay. I don't want to uh, alarm anybody with the, with the word of demolition. But yeah, some of that stuff's ongoing. Right. Uh, you know, we just inherited a lot of, uh, for the lack of a better word, junk in there that we're cleaning up. And uh, it's already looking a lot better than when it was when we, when we closed. Great. Further question of the commission? You're not this, for a motion. This is uh, Commissioner oh. Long. Oh, I'm sorry. I have sorry. a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, So there are pictures here of what the theater looks right, like right now. Is there a place where we can find um, pictures of the proposed uh, look for the future? Um, yeah, if you go to, I, I think I shared some renderings at our last meeting at the okay. very end. I'm not sure if that's what you're looking at. Uh, those renderings are on our website, dapperdevelopment.com, or I believe you can link to that from the huntridge.com as well. Um, and those are, again, somewhat conceptual. We think they'll be pretty close, but the real design decisions are going to be driven by the, the end users. We want to build the, uh, the, you know, the perfectly suited space for them. And then um, I had a last question. Is it going to be a concert hall or movie theater or both? I would commit to it being a performing arts center, okay. whether that is a combination of concert or theater or uh, you know whatever sort of performing arts, but it will be a, a, a theater, a performing arts theater. And this is the rendering here, you can see. Okay. I mean, as a, as a point of reference, though, that there is no requirement uh, that this be returned to a theater. Uh, the, the requirement is to restore, uh, to basically, basically preserve the theater space, which we certainly will do. I don't know that there is a requirement that it will be a theater, but that is our intention. Great. All right. Look for the uh, please. Mr. Chair, through you, I just wanted to thank Mr. Curran. I tried to uh, get into the tour, and it was full, but he squeezed me in, and so I was lucky, lucky enough to have that tour. But. This is great. I'm excited about the project, and uh, you'll see my vote uh, for approval of the uh, application to register it as a historic site. Thank you. Great. And also would look, uh, uh, ask you, uh, uh, this is a courtesy, I think there were other members of the commission that were not able to, uh, to attend the, the six uh, opportunities. Uh, do you foresee any additional times that uh, if we call that we may be able to uh, we can't certainly can't attend as a group because of the open meeting law sure no quorum but you know what if you want to uh get in touch with me uh diane can give you my contact information if you don't already have it uh i'd be glad to get you guys in there great all right look for a motion i move to i would like to make a motion to approve the uh application for designation on the historic uh city of las vegas historic uh places roll. I second the motion. Beck for the record. Further discussion by the commission? Uh, just even for the record, I just wanted to remind the commissioners that this is just the first step in a three-step process where the commission will vote today 
and then if the vote is yay, then it will then go to the Planning Commission because it needs to have a zoning uh, alteration because it will be listed as the historic site. And once it's uh, approved by the Zoning Commission, and that has to be uh, publicly noticed as well, then it will go to City Council, and then it will be on the register. So it doesn't get on the register today. Um, it's going to be a couple more months before it goes through that process. So I just wanted to remind everybody of that. Well before construction starts. <laughs> uh, general public comments. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Hotchkiss votes aye on the phone. Motion carries unanimously with those in attendance with the chair voting in favor. Thank you again, Mr. Kern. Thank you. Let's move on to item number seven, 21-0269-HPC1. Report by the Department of Planning regarding the director's updates. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Seth Floyd, Director of Community Development, all the way down here uh, on the end. I am very pleased that the Huntridge passed during my tenure. I can take no credit for uh, this getting on the register, but uh, I guess I can take some now that it's uh, during my time here. So I appreciate that. Thanks, John. I don't know if John planned that, but I appreciate that. Um, I've only got one substantive update today. I updated you last uh, meeting about the master plan 2050 uh, that is working its way up to city council that was on the city council agenda for june 2nd so next wednesday uh, if that gets approved uh, there are some significant uh, sections in there that i know some of you had some comments on that deal with uh, uh, historic preservation and pre preservation related activities so um, as soon as that passes we will start implementing that plan which includes those uh, portions related to historic preservation so i think this will be a a new phase in historic preservation for the city of Las Vegas, and I'm excited about that. That's great. And that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Questions from the commission? Seeing none, let's move on to the, uh, to the next item, which is item number eight, 21-0270, uh, Dash HPC one report by the Department of Planning regarding the project update list that's in your board packet. Uh, Steve Martin, for the record, we should have a PowerPoint for this. Just wait one second. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Jeff, for putting up the Huntridge image as well. Appreciate that. Okay, for our updates. The Las Vegas High School National Register of Historic Places, the Fraser Hall, I know it seems to be taking a long time, but it's still with the keeper of the register in DC. They had some edits they requested from SHPO, so SHPO's working with them, and it's back with DC, and hopefully we'll hear something uh, soon. For the Las Vegas High School National Register of Historic Places for the district listing, that draft will be due at the July HPC meeting, and the consultant will be here for um, uh, her report. The survey catalog grant, the draft for that project is due at our June HPC meeting, and the consultant for that project will be here to discuss the update on that report. And the strategic outreach is moving a little bit slow, but it is still in progress. Other than that, the, uh, I know, uh, Chairman Stoll already had mentioned this, but we did have our City of Las Vegas, the 30s film premiere on May 15th over at the Art House Theater. And Commissioner Levine was able to show up. Thank you for, for being there. I know that we were competing against a lot of high school and college graduations. So unfortunately, quite a few people weren't able to attend. However, we did have a uh, audience of about 60 people to see it in person. Uh, we had this beautiful cake that uh, was made from a 1930s recipe um, called a poor man's cake with an image of a photograph of that was in the film. Uh, we also simultaneously released the film uh, at the same time that it was shown in the theater on our Channel 2, as well as YouTube, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. And um, I forgot what the numbers were, but I think as of Monday, there were almost 10,000 views already, uh, maybe even more than that. Is Jen still here? She's not. Um, so we have still have quite a, quite a bit of interest in this film, and 
hopefully, if uh, the next two films are appro approved at the end by City Council next month, then everybody can make it to the premiere for part four. Two more updates, the, where there is a loan to the Neon Museum. So this is the image on your left. It's the halo, a back panel, and that 1980s rendition of the Blue Angels um, wand. So as everybody recalls, the Centennial Commission funded the renovation of the Blue Angel statue and sign that was installed over at uh, Eastern and Charleston Boulevard. These remaining items were later additions and she was restored to her 1950s design so these were just leftovers they had been sitting in my office in an uncurated uh, condition and so the city was able to uh, negotiate a loan to have the neon museum hold them for us for a period of 10 years and they will be making some sort of a display with them uh, at some point they're going to do a bit of restoration on some of these and then i will let everybody know but at least now they're in a museum storage environment rather than sitting against my uh, metal cabinet on the right we have the nevada preservation foundation uh, plaque ceremony for the plaza casino and um, hotel and they were awarded a uh, plaque for um, their 50 year anniversary uh, one of the oldest hotels in downtown uh, the mayor was able to show up and give remarks so um, and a couple of the commissioners were able to make it to that one so thank you for showing up appreciate that and the last thing is my do not forget i haven't received any lists yet so Please send me your lists of the 11 most endangered sites in Las Vegas. Remember, I need them by June 24th. Um, and the picture on the right is just to remind you that's the historic west side, that's Jackson Avenue um, and the old Husky gas station. If you need the form again, let me know. I'm happy to resend it to you. Um, put them in your order of what you think is most endangered and what is uh, need of the most uh, urgent need of assistance. And happy to answer any questions if anybody has any on those updates. Commissioner Beck, I just have one comment. I did go and participate in the um, reverse Las Vegas Days Parade. And I just want to comment and say that it really was a lot of fun. Going from being in the parade, going down the street, to driving through in a vehicle and looking at uh, the participants staged up alongside the streets, it was I thought it was really a lot of fun, and um, I'm, I'm really glad I got the opportunity to go. Well, well, thank you, and yeah, I'm sorry I forgot to mention that. On May 15th, uh, we also did have our reverse parade that was put on by our Parks and Recreation Department, and I'm glad that you were able to drive through. It was, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really, it was so different. You didn't know what to expect, so it was fun. Everyone seemed pretty happy. Yeah, I'm glad. We mainly had uh, uh, all positive comments. I haven't heard anything negative about it, but hopefully next year we'll go back to a regular parade. Yeah. Further comments from the uh, commission? Seeing none, let's move then on to item number nine, which is 21-0271-HPC1 dash report by the Department of Planning. Uh, regarding uh, historic articles, resources in the local uh, uh, media. Diane? So, Sebra, for the record, on this one, again, you have to keep in mind that these are due to our, through our process, quite far in advance of what's happening today. So, hopefully, everybody saw the um, article about the Pleistocene um, fossils that were found over near Floyd Lamb Park. Um, and other than that, there was um, a discussion from our Centennial Commission uh, President, um, Mayor Good Goodman, and um, uh, our Councilman Creer about the creation of a Las Vegas museum. If anybody wants to listen to that on KNPR, it's an interesting discussion. And the parade and the um, premiere were covered by some media as well. And there was an interesting article there. I know it's not really Southern. Nevada, but there was a historic cannonball story, which I found kind of interesting, that was returned. There's 
story on today's Las Vegas Sun on the story about uh, Sue Fong Chung uh, and, and her work uh, and a presentation that she is going to make. Uh, so we get a chance to uh, take a look at that. Any further comment from the Commission? And then we'll move on to item number 10, which is in fact 21-00273-HPC1, uh, 21 discussion regarding topics for future agenda items by the Historic Preservation Commission. Point of reference, comments made during this portion of the agenda by uh, individual commission members shall refer solely to the proposed future agenda item and any discussion shall be limited to whether or not such proposed item uh, is within the purview of this commission and whether such proposed item shall be placed on a future agenda. No discussion regarding the substance of any such proposed topic shall occur and no action shall be taken regarding the proposal. Uh, commission members? Anything that uh, needs to be put on uh, a future agenda? Hearing and seeing none. <coughs> oh, please, I didn't see your microphone. Go ahead, please. I didn't know if this fits into this, but I just uh, think that our trees were very historic in the center of Las Vegas Boulevard, and I always heard they were stored somewhere. The Planning Commission knows about that. Uh, and are we going to get those trees back in the center dividers? Because it's an environmental, it's, you know, I just hate, where, where, I hate it to the see them all tore down. Where were the trees? Right the center of Las Vegas Boulevard from downtown all the way, they tore them all out. We'll, we'll look into it and, and report back to you on the um, June meeting. I'll find out what's Yeah, I was told that they were stored somewhere, and I don't know how they do that, but okay. <coughs> okay, we'll find out. It, it's quite a long uh, stretch of property that they tore down all the trees and palms right through the center. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Commissioner Laramie, on related to that, if we're gonna have an update on that project, could we also get an update? I know, I believe it was Cultural Resources was looking into a potential interpretation um, along maybe Las Vegas Boulevard or, or downtown, um, and we were gonna have some partnership between HPC and their work. Could we get an update on that too? I can give you an update on that. Um, I can tell you it is on the back burner. Okay. Uh, when I was thinking about an update, uh, uh, Diane, was the presentation that Mr. Jervik gave to the uh, Centennial Commission uh, on Monday regarding pr Project Enchilada. Uh, uh, that was a pretty substantial update on, on the preservation of the neon signs. Uh, uh, maybe we can look into uh, having Mr. Jervik appear at this group to, to give us uh, a, a similar update. A couple of the signs were still in progress of being restored or recreated, and, uh, uh, and I know the whole area is in a bit of flux, uh, but it would be nice for this commission to have some sort of an update. Okay, I will invite him. Thank you. Further comments on item number 10? Hearing none, item 11, citizens participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the commission. If you wish to be heard, come forward and give your name for the record and the amount of discussion on any particular uh, topic as well as uh, the number of uh, speakers uh, may be limited. Hearing and seeing none, I will move on to item number 12, which is we're adjourned. Bill, can I see you for one second?